Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at um, that podcast website again. And so just to kind of a review of where we're at, uh, this is the current application um, as it uh, stands now. And the new one that we've been working on is that podcast.test. So it doesn't look very pretty, um, but in the previous session, we looked at trying to create uh, navigation uh, that looks somewhat similar using Flexbox and Tailwind CSS. Uh, we're going to get to some of the more design-friendly stuff uh, at another time. Uh, we're just going to keep moving on for now. Um, as a reminder on the goals, uh, we want to be able to handle uploads ourselves and post episodes in advance. And we can actually take a pretty good view of the problem that we have right now, being as our site is static. If we look at uh, this build right here, um, a couple of episodes ago, I clicked on this and there's no image. And the reason there's no image uh, is because I haven't actually created it yet. But the problem is that everything about this particular episode is already baked into um, the MP3 itself, um, the files, everything. So let's see if I can look at some of the content here. Let's see if there's a date, uh, 2000. Yeah, so this was supposed to be published on 2000, uh, or on September 5th, 2018. Um, that's just not really feasible anymore, given that it is now uh, much later in the month than that. So um, what I had done was actually uploaded this as episode 51, um, thinking this is when this was going to happen. The problem is, if I go now and look at the actual website, uh, what we're going to see is that episode 51 was actually a different episode. Um, so what I have in my local workspace is different. Um, I already had to go in and bump this version or this file. Um, this was originally going to be uh, episode 52. Um, I switched to episode 51 because I needed this one to go out first. Um, so yeah, this, this whole process is very annoying uh, to try and deal with this. So this is one of the major things that we're trying to accomplish with this application rewrite. So, um, so far we've done a bunch of things just to sort of get uh, an application up and running. Um, the next thing that I'd like to do is do export, uh, export um, episode from old site. Uh, and then possibly following that up with modeling. Uh, modeling episodes in new site. The way that we are currently storing this information is in the GitHub repository, or in the Git repository, uh, in the sources directory. And each file represents a an episode. So as you can see, even the the date is embedded in these files. If we look for episode 51, and uh, we see that it's actually there. If I look in our local instance, uh, podcast, what we're going to find is, that's not the right place. Um, so these were actually recorded a while ago. Uh, episode 50. Um, actually, I don't know why it's there. Let's go. Oh, you know what? Uh, I need to podcast.io. Um, I'm guessing that file. Ah, you know what? I actually cleaned this. Um, get update. Transcript parser. Ah, so this is going to be fun. I'm going to get a conflict here, possibly. Super. Yeah, so parse transcript. <sighs> All right, so bin parse transcript. Um, I essentially had to rewrite this, and it didn't turn out to be so bad. Um, I rewrote it on a laptop, <laughs> so um, which didn't have this version. So let's do 
add bin parse every base continue. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to keep what was skip. There we go. I'm still not sure why when we load up this episode, it actually exists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun this. I, since it's a static file, it's possible that the uh, it's possible that in the uh, repository itself, um, I don't have that file. But if I look in build, uh, let's see, no, it's output dev uh, episodes episode fifty one. Yeah, so it's there. Uh, I think if I do a rebuild, I'll put dev. Uh, what I'm guessing I'm going to see is that file is no longer going to be there. And now we have the one with JMAC. So um, it's a little confusing why those... Um, <laughs> It was confusing to me why that file was there and kind of half built, but that's sort of what the problem is. Um, so if we look at one of these files, it gives us all of the information that we need to know about the episodes. So we're looking at uh, source episodes. Uh, we'll do 2018. There we go, the one with JMac. All right, so the the way that uh, Sculpin and a lot of static sites work is that there's usually a bit of data in the front of the file that is sort of like, a, it collects information um, that you can then reference later. So here we have like title, subtitle, episode number, uh, that sort of thing. And it's called uh, YAML front matter is the way that uh, people describe this. Then after this uh, line break here, or after this horizontal break, everything else is, at least in this case, is a twig file. So we see everything we need to know that's building, say, this JMAC episode up here. We have the title, uh, date, we have the GUID, uh, embed URL, the RSS URL. Uh, these URLs are different uh, so that um, potentially you could uh, rec uh, store uh, redirects uh, differently. Like if you wanted to distinguish between the embed URL or when it's being used as an embedded file versus coming from RSS. Uh, there's also a download URL, duration, file size, and some other stuff that we need for um, doing, uh, making it look pretty. So with the background image, with the width and height, um, and then uh, we try to give image credit where credit is due. So what we really need is almost what we would get from the RSS feed. If we look in source, uh, let's see. We've got episodes.xml. Here we have uh, the, the top talks about the main metadata for the, the whole podcast. And then for each of the episodes, uh, we generate an item tag. So not everything that we need is actually in here. Uh, the, pro the, the other bits of data, like the background image, the, some of the other uh, metadata that we might want separately, uh, like we might want to have the episode number, that sort of thing, uh, th those aren't here. Those aren't represented here. So we need to create another file like this to generate all of the content that we need. Uh, the other bit here, we can see that we're doing iTunes uh, subtitle, and here's a summary. So we do have access to uh, the bits of information that are coming through. So here we have episode blocks iTunes summary, and we're getting the raw data from that. If we look back in here, we'll see that the blocks that we have are the content. Uh, we have the iTunes summary, so that's what, what's being uh, put in there. And then we have a block called transcript which contains all of the transcript information. Uh, we also have another file that we're using for the uh, Twitter player. And so it's episodes.json, which is sort of similar. Um, it's looking at all of the episodes and getting uh, just a little bit of information out. And so we're actually getting things like the image, the site URL duration, uh, here we're creating a title using some of the metadata like episode number, episode title. So what I think I'd like to do 
is see how much we can do with uh, maybe a JSON file. So we're going to call this, we're going to start with this as a template and copy source episodes JSON to source episodes, uh, call it export.json. And again, the goal is going to be trying to get all of the information for all of the episodes into a place that we can then import into the new site. I'm going to hop back into PHP Storm to do some editing there. I'm going to have to open up the project because it's a different project. We're going to go code, podcast.io. We'll just open that. All right. Now it's going to have to do some scanning, but we're going to be able to look right inside the source here. And so here we have export.json. Composer, there we go. Uh, so the editor here isn't going to be super pretty uh, because it doesn't like this YAML front matter. Um, what we're telling, uh, what we're telling Sculpin to use is the dataset episodes. So this would be all of the files under episodes. Um, let's do four episode in data.episodes. And then it has it's keyed by episode number. I don't think uh, we want to do that. I think what I would rather have as the key would be episode.guid. Uh, so let's go ahead and just run Sculpt and Watch. Uh, generate Watch. All right, so that should be looking for changes as we make them. And let's go now and check out the local instance and go to export.json. Uh, file not found. Is that what it was actually called? Yeah, it should have been in there. Uh, permalink. <laughs> um, I need to actually change this to export.json. And now when it rebuilds, we should be able to see this file. Okay, so the GUID is the unique identifier for each episode. And for the older episodes, um, that GUID was actually a URL. Uh, one of the common things I've seen with podcast sites is they will change uh, where they're hosting things. And that if the GUID changes, then it causes you to re-download all of the older episodes again, and they'll show up as new. So we want to, it's one of the design goals is we need to make sure that the GUID is going to be unique going forward using something that looks like a UUID, but also support the older uh, GUIDs that we had from when we first kicked off when we were hosting with SignalLeaf. Um, this is just a visual thing. Uh, I'm gonna try and add a JSON view. Uh, Chrome extension form. Here we go. I don't remember which one I have otherwise, but let's try this. Add to Chrome. Add extension. Okay, cool. Now let's try to reload this again. All right, now it's going to look prettier. Uh, pretty doesn't matter with the JSON, but it does help when we're looking at this. Um, so there's a couple of other things that we might want to take into account. This is not terribly useful if we want to actually download that image. Because we're, going to, we're going to want to import that image. So we're going to want to try and make that be a site URL. So let's try to do that. So we'll do site URL uh, image. Hmm. It's already doing site URL. So I need to specify the site URL in this case. Um, let me see, I don't remember how to do that with Sculpin. Uh, let's see, server URL, override URL. Okay, so we're gonna do URL equals, and what is our prefix again here? That's well, actually not secure, so. Do this. 
And let's see what these URLs generate like now. Okay, cool. So now these are full URLs. So in the production environment, <laughs> uh, uh, Oliver just uh, mentioned in chat that he almost told me how to do something with Sculpin, uh, which is awesome. It's funny because uh, like Sculpin's my project, <laughs> and, and I'm not doing a whole lot with it these days, so that's why it's a. I had to double check how that was supposed to be done. The other thing that we're going to want to keep track of here is the uh, episode URL path because we want these to be the same as well. Uh, so how we're going to do that. Uh, by changing this metadata. So let's just do, um, let's see here, site URL. Uh, let's call this uh, uh, path. And we'll just remove site URL because that's not super important, actually. We just need to know what the, the URL path is going to be. And reload that. All right. So this is the important bit uh, for down here. This is this is what's important. So um, let's go back to uh, let's go back to one of the actual episodes. Okay. So I'm going to copy all of this information into. Um, into the export file, just so we have it. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, I'm gonna indent this correctly. And I don't remember code comment. There we go. That's actually, I don't know if that's actually gonna work. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Still worked, awesome. So this way we can reference all of the, the fields that we actually need. So we have title, um, and we really just want title by itself. So we'll do episode title. Um, number was sort of implied uh, in the old version, so we have to add that directly here. So we'll do number episode number. <laughs> uh, Oliver just said that it's pretty cool to see Sculpin used with Valet. I have to agree. It's I, I love Valet. It's pretty amazing. Um, if anybody's watching and you're curious about it, it's actually a Laravel project um, that was designed to try uh, and make it easier to do local development on a lot of projects on lower end hardware. Uh, so if you're running around using like a um, like a MacBook Air or something like that. Uh, they actually talk about on here when you might use um, Valet versus Homestead. Homestead is a, a vagrant solution, so it's a um, it could be a little heavier because you have to run a virtual machine. Um, and this was designed to sort of be a more lightweight uh, way to handle things. And I just like using it anyway, um, even on a on more powerful machines. It does a lot of stuff with like uh, I think it's the DNS mask. Uh, DNS mask project that makes it easy to um, do things with uh, fake domains, I guess. So pretty much any directory that I have in my code folder. So if I look in here, all of these directories uh, become things that I can actually just go to by adding, uh, like say, tailwind css docs dot test. Uh, if I do that, it's automatically going to load that. So it's a, a pretty cool tool um, to make spinning up new projects a lot easier without having to mess around with pretty much anything. Um, so let's go back here and see where we're at. So we have the number with the title, subtitle. Hey, it looks like Joe Ferguson uh, is joining in uh, from Facebook. So um, Valet just got a, a shout as did uh, Homestead. I think Joe's, Joe's one of the developers on Homestead. All right. Um, just to be explicit, I'm going to also add the uh, GUID as a key. So I think it makes sense for it to be a key out here as well. Um, and just to make it easier, I'm going to have the key in here also. So GUID. All right, there we go. All right, so title. Did we get subtitle yet? Yes, we did. So subtitle. 
Uh, let's do date next. I don't really like this particular date format. I don't remember if this is actually a date time object or not. Date. Let's see how this renders. I guess we'll just have to use parse date on, on the ingest side. Um, I think that will be totally fine. So we have date. Oh, yeah, see, so date's not coming through. So um, let's just leave it like that, because I think we should be able to pass that into date on the receiving side. There's no point in, well, I, hmm. we can fix that pretty easily later if it becomes an issue. All right, so we've done title. We've done subtitle, we've done number, date, and GUID. Let's see here, so date. Uh, we need embed URL, download URL. So embed URL. So this was actually do, um, it looks like, I, I think I remember that originally we had the case where sometimes the URL was listed as HTTP instead of HTTPS, and but both work. Um, so, in order to use the Twitter player, uh, you need to support HTTPS for everything. Um, so even though we were getting the download URLs sent to us as HTTP URLs, we could switch them to HTTPS and it worked fine. So we're gonna do that same sort of thing here. So we got embed URL, RSS URL, and download. So we'll call this download. Um, RSS, RSS, and the other one was embed. So this file is so broken, it's not letting me do fancy things like double click and select just parts of the code, which is awesome. Let's run this again. All right, so these are all the same audio simple cast uh, for episode 51. Let's see if they were actually different at some point. Uh, I think they were, they just aren't anymore. So it's possible we don't actually need to keep track of these. Um, yeah, let's 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 not keep information we aren't going to need. So let's just call this um, media URL, and we'll just use the RSS URL for that. Let's just double check we haven't done something weird. All right, so now we just have a media URL. Um, so we're going to get rid of these. Uh, duration was um, this sort of format, and we kept that. And we can leave duration like that, that's fine. Uh, file size is something that would be good to have. Um, so we'll pass that along as well. File size. And then we can do some other things to make that look prettier. But right now, uh, this value is in bytes. Um, all right. Where else are we at? So we have uh, file size. None of our episodes were marked as explicit. I'm pretty sure uh, we can do a quick check on that. Crap um, minus uh, I. Episodes. All right, and then um, yeah, so none of them are 
anything other than no. Um, yeah, it's weird. we're usually pretty clean on our podcast, so so I'm not even going to bother uh, keeping that. Um, we do want to have the background information. So this is actually a U, uh, an image URL. So we already have background image. and be a little fancier here. And background image. And let's actually just make this a sub-object. Um, there we go. URL. Let's see if we've managed to switch that. Yep, that looks fine. Uh, then we're going to want to get the width and height. BG image width. And I'm not sure if we actually had width and height for everything, so I'm not sure if this one's actually going to go right. Uh, BJ image height. Let me get rid of that because that would not be good. All right, so that's good. Let's see. Yeah, so some of these are actually going to be empty. Um, I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Uh, mostly because dealing with whether or not we should add that trailing comma, <laughs> it's going to be a pain uh, in terms of trying to generate actual, um, in terms of generating an actual valid JSON. The other information that we have here, it would be the credits. So let's do um, background image and we'll do another sub object. We'll do credit and we've got oh, by dot see, image credit dot by It's gonna get really annoying working here much longer. So we got credit, so we got URL and description. So the URL is where you can find uh, the original if we know where that was. Um, and then description, it's just a little more text helper to make sure that we can show something nice for the images that we're using for our backgrounds. I'm gonna reload this now. Ah. We've broken something somewhere. It's no longer generated. Ah, it's that trailing comma. <laughs> ah, gotta love working with Jason. All right, so everything's rendering again. Another nice, uh, another nice aspect of using a plugin like this uh, for testing this sort of thing is it makes it really easy to see when something is broken. Um, okay, so we have background image. All right, that's all there. So we have all of the information that we got from the YAML front matter. So we can get rid of all of this now. The next thing that we're gonna to want to look into is the blocks. So if we go back and look at one of these episodes, we need content, we need transcript and iTunes summary. So I'm gonna do background, do content, uh, description, we're going to be a little more, well, let's do, we'll just do content, we'll do top level things. So content, iTunes, summary, and transcript. So we got, all right, so empty values, great. I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna to have to encode these and whether there's gonna be any problems with it. So we're gonna to try 
to do episode.blocks.content and filter it through raw. And that broke some things. Um, let's see here. Best way to do this is probably going to be to do some sort of JSON ex escaping. Let's see what we can do with that. Hmm. And here's some very good job. Okay, so let's try this and see if this works. Raw to escape JS. Hopefully, I have a modern enough version of Sculpin that this actually works. If not, this is going to be painful. Uh, didn't work. Try escaping HTML. Hmm. Escape for JS must not have been appropriate for JavaScript. Hmm. Wonder which things are breaking the JSON parser here. Great if that's all I need to do. JSON encode. Um, quote. No, I didn't do it. Make sure there isn't no yeah okay so JSON and code are there options for strictness no yeah uh, code JSON gonna filter it through raw oh, that didn't work it really didn't work. Let's be raw first. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so I'm going to not do this right now. I'm going to switch to iTunes Summary instead and see if we can find, see if those work. So let's do content, do iTunes Summary, and we'll just do JSON encode. 
No. So there's something even in the summary that isn't working. Uh, why is this quote there first? I wonder if that's part of the problem. I'm going to put it in just like this. So it catches up. Okay. I think JSON encode, the problem is that it looks like it's actually quoting. It's treating this as if it were a quote. So then if we do raw, here, let's try this. Looks like it's already doing its own quote. There we go. All right, so um, we have everything working again, which is good. So let's see if we can do the same thing for content. So what, what happens is that the summary itself gets converted to a JSON object, uh, which includes the double quotes. Um, what raw does is, um, well, by default, Twig is going to try to escape that value, uh, which is why we get the ampersand quote things. Uh, by telling it to go to raw, we tell it to treat it as if it's just a plain string. All right, so let's go back to content and change this to content. All right, so now we have the content in here as well, which is awesome. Um, and then the last bit is going to be doing the same thing with the transcript. Um, transcript. We don't have very many of these. Okay, cool. So the transcripts are by far the biggest pieces we have, and they've only been on the last few episodes. Um, otherwise, we get null values, which is great, um, because I think that makes sense. Uh, we could try to use JSON encode in a few other places, um, but it doesn't look like we really need to. So we have everything in each one of these file, uh, each one of these episode objects now that we would need to recreate exactly what we have on the new version of that podcast website. Uh, so I think we're not going to have time to get to that part today. Um, but what I'd like to do is build something that reads this file format and is able to either populate a database or maybe we might try to do something just with some static files for now. Um, so rather than connecting to a database, uh, it can actually can get the information from Redis or something like that, or even some uh, flat files on disk so that we can continue to publish new content with the old site and start using that content in the new application uh, while we still build that out. And ideally, I'd like to be able to launch the new application at some point, even before we have the admin interface fully flushed out um, by connecting to the um, uh, connecting to the old application uh, that's maybe generating this file also uh, that the new application will be connecting to. Um, so I think that's it for now. Um, tomorrow, we can maybe take a look at that part or on the next session. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, thanks for joining today, um, and we'll see you soon.